Hey gang, and welcome back. Just a reminder, you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA at FlipSideGaming.com. You'll get 10% off orders of $10 or more, and help with the channel at the same time. You could also consider turning off your ad blocker when watching my videos. Can't stop, won't stop, and today I am playing Jason's Ghoul Color Gisa deck, keeping an Undead Warchief, Frexian Reclamation, Frexian Arena, with three swamps and a Reliquary Tower. Eric is playing his Arcades deck, and keeps a Plains, a Forest, a Glacial Fortress, Devastation Tide, Wall of Nets, Three Visits, and Orator of Ojitai. Jason is taking his Gave deck out, and keeps Sulport Cutthroat, Puppeteer Clique, Lanoir Wastes, Crash the Unredeemed, Overgrown Tomb, and Sylvan Library. Last but not least, Josh has joined us again playing Neheb, keeping Chandra Torch of Defiance, Grenzo Havoc Razor, Lightning Greaves, Cryptolith Fragment, Strip Mine, and two Snow Covered Mountains. Josh wins the die roll and starts us off. Josh plays a Snow Covered Mountain, passing turn. Eric plays a Tap Glacial Fortress and passes. I play a Swamp, passing to Jason. Jason plays a Lanoir Waste, tapping it and taking one to cast Green Sun Zenith where X is zero. He goes and finds a Dryad Arbor and passes to Josh. Josh plays a Snow-Covered Mountain and casts Grenzo Havoc Razor. Eric plays a Forest and casts three visits. He goes to find a Breeding Pool and passes before searching. I play a Swamp for my turn and I pass. Jason casts a Sylvan Library in his main phase and plays a Polluted Delta before passing to Josh. Josh plays a Strip Mine and he casts Lightning Greaves. Grenzo gets a fancy pair of boots, and moving to combat, Jason cracks the delta to go and find a land, while Josh swings Grenzo at me for two. Grenzo exiles the top card of my library, which I nicely hand to Josh. Jason finds a godless shrine, and Josh passes to Eric. Eric plays a plains and casts Arcades, passing to me. I play a reliquary tower, and I cast Phyrexian Arena. Jason uses his library trigger and takes four damage to keep one extra card. He plays a Plains in his main phase and casts Zulaport Cutthroat before passing to Josh. Josh casts a Blood Moon and instantly becomes Jason and Eric's enemy. Josh decides to rub some salt in the wound and swings Grenzo at Jason for two, who takes the hit, and Josh exiles Jason's top card thanks to Grenzo's ability. Eric casts an Orator of Ojitai in his main phase, drawing from its own Edge of the Battlefield effect and then drawing again from Arcades' trigger. He then plays a really old and expensive Savannah slash Mountain before moving to combat and hitting Josh for three with Arcades. I lose one from my arena trigger and draw, then draw for turn. I play a Swamp and I cast Praetor's Grasp, targeting Jason because Josh made it look so fun. I pick my card and I pass to Jason. Jason uses his library trigger and we realize we don't know exactly what the ruling is for Dryad Arbor with Blood Moon. Josh googles it and we come to the conclusion that it's still a 1-1, but it now taps for red. Jason then decides to take four and keep an extra card to his library trigger and he also plays an expensive mountain that looks an awful lot like a savannah. Moving to combat, he swings the Dryad Arbor and the Zulaport Cutthroat at Josh for two. Josh plays a Snow-Covered Mountain and casts Cryptolith Fragment. Grenzo goes at Jason once more, and upon connecting for two, exiles Jason's top card. Eric casts Mirari's Wake in his main phase and plays a Mana Confluence. Moving to combat, he swings both creatures at Josh for nine damage, four of which is commander damage. Eric passes, and at the end of turn, I cast Jason's copy of Vampiric Tutor, taking two damage to find a card and put it on top. I lose one life from my arena trigger, and I draw a card, and then draw for turn. I play a Swamp, and I cast Jet Medallion, followed by an Undead Warchief. My zombies now cost three colorless less, which is fantastic, and I pass to Jason. Jason uses his library trigger again, and takes another four to keep an extra card. He plays a Marsh Flats as his land for turn, and then pays three to cast a Chromatic Lantern. This helps since he can now cast Birds of Paradise, which he does, and he passes to Josh. Josh untaps for turn, and draws. He then taps out, and everyone takes one from the fragment being tapped. He casts Steel Hellkite, and passes to Eric. Eric taps his planes and his mountainous glacial fortress for two white and two red, which he uses to cast Wall of Nets. He draws as it enters, and then passes turn. I lose one to the arena again, and I draw, and then draw for turn. I drop a Swamp for my land for turn, and need only pay four to cast Ghoul Color Gisa. I then drop Frexian Reclamation to the field, and I pass. At the end of my turn, Jason casts Eldamri's Call to go and find a creature in his library. He grabs Seedborn Muse and puts it to hand. Jason quickly makes sure he has everything untapped and triggers his library. He keeps one extra, taking four, and plays a mountain that has been altered to look like a guy's cradle. Jason then casts his own copy of Marari's Wake and then needs only tap one land to cast a cripple at right and passes to Josh. 
Josh untaps for his turn and pays five, one of which is from the fragment which deals one to everyone, to cast Neheb. He moves the Greaves onto his commander, and moving to combat, swings the Steel Hellkite at me. Jason gets some revenge with a Swords to Plowshare, exiling Josh's Metal Dragon and giving him five life. Josh then gains three red mana in his second main phase, and taps his Strip Mine to cast Koth. He downticks Koth to gain four red mana, and uses the mana to cast Chandra, Torch of Defiance. He then uses Chandra's uptick to make two red mana and cast by force where X is one to destroy my jet medallion. Eric casts an Academy Rector in his main phase and then drops a privileged position. He moves to combat, swinging Arcades and the Orator at Koth and Chandra to take them both out. Once again, I lose one life to my arena to draw a card and draw for turn. I play a Swamp as my land drop and I cast Alter the Brood. I then bring out Agent of Erebos, and I stack my triggers like a goof, deciding to exile Jason's graveyard before milling my opponents for one with the altar trigger. I pass to Jason in shame. Jason takes another four from his library trigger, and dips his life total even further. He takes off his shades, as things are getting serious, and he taps the Dryad Arbor with the Cryptolith Rite for two green mana because of Mirari's Wake. He uses the mana to cast Beast Within, destroying the Blood Moon. He then plays an Overgrown Tomb, taking two to have it come into play untapped, and he casts a doubling season. He then cracks the marsh flats, taking one to go and find Bayou. Jason then pays enough to cast Gave, but Eric is ready with a counterspell, taking one as he taps his mana confluence to pay for it. Jason then taps his guy's cradle for four green, and taps the cutthroat for mana to cast Seedborn Muse, and passes to Josh. Josh plays a snow-covered mountain for his turn, and he passes. Eric casts an Axebane Guardian in his main phase, drawing from the Arcades trigger. He plays a Sun Petal Grove for his land, and then casts a Nexus of Fate, taking one from tapping his mana confluence. Moving to combat, the Rector, Arcades, and the Order swing at Jason. Jason stops the Rector with a Seedborn Muse, and the Order with the Birds of Paradise, taking four from Arcades. With Jason's bird dying, the Zolpark Cutthroat triggers, and all of his opponents lose one, while Jason gains one life. Eric exiles his Rector when it dies, and goes to find a Melch in the Mine Cage. We then move to Eric's extra turn. Eric plays an island, and he realizes he can't kill Jason now with the Flyers. He casts a Jungle Barrier, drawing from its own Enter the Battlefield trigger, and then Arcades' trigger. Eric then taps out and floats 15 mana, and casts Devastation Tide. With his remaining mana, Eric recasts Arcades and Mirari's Wake, passing to me and discarding down to 7. I play Makokoro, Center of the Sea, as my land drop for turn, and recast Alter the Brood. I then recast Phyrexian Arena, milling my opponents for one. I then drop the Undead Warchief, milling them all again for one, and pass to Jason. Jason casts an Eternal Witness in his main phase, returning Birds of Paradise to his hand. He casts it, and then recasts his Lepark Cutthroat, the Sylvan Library, and his Right. Josh recasts his Lightning Greaves in his main phase, and then Grenzo, equipping Grenzo with the Greaves. Josh then casts a Ruby Medallion, and decides to pass to Eric. Eric plays a Foily Unstable Forest, and casts Jungle Barrier, drawing two cards once more. He then recasts the Axebane Guardian, drawing a card, and then casts Wall of Nets, drawing again. Eric then recasts the Order of Ojitai, drawing two, and recasts his Privileged Position before moving to combat. He swings Arcades at Jason, who blocks with the birds once more. As the birds die, Jason drains his opponent for one, and gains one life. I draw from my arena, losing one, and draw for turn. I play a Swamp for my turn, and then cast Sidisi Undead Vizier. This mills my opponents for one card, and I have her exploit the Undead Warchief. I tutor for a card, and put it to my hand. I then drop Swiftfoot Boots, milling my opponents for one more, and then the Frexian Reclamation, milling them again. Jason uses his Library Trigger again, keeping one and putting two back. He then taps Eternal Witness and the Cutthroat, along with his Cradle, to recast Mirari's Wake. Jason then casts Puppeteer Click to bring back Eric's Wall of Shards. Jason then casts a Blood Artist and uses most of his remaining mana to cast Crash the Unredeemed. He taps the Dried Arbor for black mana, gaining an additional one, and pays one black to sacrifice his Eternal Witness, the Wall, and the Puppeteer Click to Crash. This gives Jason three life, draws him three cards, and puts three plus one plus one counters on Crash. He drains the table for three and gains three with the Cutthroat Triggers, and then puts all three Blood Artist triggers on Josh, draining him for three and gaining three. The clique then returns because of Persist, and Jason returns Eric's Wall of Shards. He then uses the one black floating to sacrifice the clique and wall once more, gaining two life, drawing two cards, and putting two more counters on Kraj. He also drains his opponents for two, and gains two life, and then drains Eric for two, and gains two with Blood Artist. 
Josh draws for turn and reveals it, showing the table Bonfire of the Damned. He decides to cast it and pays so that X is 6, which includes the reduction from a medallion. He targets Eric, dealing 6 to him and all of his creatures. Eric draws for turn and plays a Tropical Island. He then pays 6 to recast Arcades and drops a Dragon Throne of Tarkir, which is super spicy in his deck. Eric then casts Wonder, and Jason sings a little line from Wonderwall. Eric then swings the Jungle Barrier, and the Wall nets at Jason. Jason, feeling comfortable with how much life he can gain, decides to take the hit, but Eric has barred the door, which is more than enough to kill Jason. And Eric then casts Mystical Tutor before passing to me. He finds Nexus of Fate and puts it on top. I lose one to my arena, drawing a card and drawing for turn. I play a Swamp and mill everyone for one, but Eric still gets to shuffle a Nexus into his library. I then cast Army of the Damned, gaining 13 tap zombie tokens, and mill Josh and Eric for 13. I swing Sedisi at Josh for 4, and in my second main phase, I cast Throne of the God Pharaoh. I then pass my turn, and at the end of turn, Josh and Eric take 14 from the Throne Trigger and my 14 tap creatures. Josh casts Fiery Confluence, destroying my Throne, my Altar, and my Boots. He then passes to Eric. Eric plays a Flooded Grove and casts Coat of Arms. My zombies are huge, but unfortunately they're tapped. Eric then puts the Dragon Throne onto Arcades, who now has Defender, and swings Wonder at Josh and the rest at me. After Eric's declared attackers, Eric taps the throne to give all of his creatures plus X plus X, where X is Arcades' power. With that ability on the stack, Eric quickly throws down Tower Defense to pump all of his creatures and take Josh and I out of the game. Game review time. So, you may have noticed, I was playing the same deck as Jason was on Monday. Unlike Monday's game, however, I seem to draw a ton of lands, whereas Jason seemed to draw a bunch of action. I wish I could have traded a little bit of each of them so they'd be more interesting in both games, but I think I was able to hang in there a lot better than Jason was, and I got pretty close to winning near the end. Speaking of Jason, I think he took more damage from his own Sylvan library than anyone attacking him or dealing any spell damage. He also came very close to winning had he been able to resolve his Gave, but unfortunately for him, Eric was able to stop it with a timely counterspell. Eric's deck, like many Arcades decks, draws a lot of cards and can do a surprising amount of damage if left alone. I really like Eric's edition of Dragon Throne of Tarkir because not only does it give Arcades Defender, he can also activate it after swinging with his commander, pumping his creatures and still getting in for commander damage. I want to say I feel bad for Josh for not doing very much this game, but he did play Blood Moon which kind of shuts down a lot of decks. Beyond that though, he was very disruptive to most game plans, destroying artifacts and wiping boards very effectively. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.